So today, let's address this question once and for all. Is Blender suitable for movie makers? I know animated movies are still movies, but generally when people talk about movies, they aren't referring to animated ones. Most of the time, they mean live action films shot with a real camera rather than those rendered with 3D software. It's important to make this distinction. Otherwise, you might end up disappointed. Not because Blender isn't capable, but because you may be using it in a way it wasn't intended to be used. By this, I don't mean that Blender can't be used by filmmakers. Rather, to use Blender for movie making, you need to set it up differently or create a unique workflow and pipeline compared to how you'd use it for animated films. Let's say you're creating a movie like Godzilla Minus One, and you're a small team with limited time and budget. You have all the shots and footage, and you've chosen Blender as your main software because of how versatile it is. And of course, because it's free. Obviously, the best choice for a movie with a lot of VFX shots like Godzilla Minus One would be Houdini. At a yearly subscription of $260, that doesn't sound too bad, but that's only for one computer. You'll most likely need another program for animation, like Maya or 3ds Max, so add about $1,000 for each artist on your team. Then, you'll need texturing software like Substance, a render engine, and so on. What I'm saying is it can get expensive quickly. So let's stick to Blender for this one. We want to make a Godzilla movie, so we need a city. Making an entire city, whether using software like Houdini or Blender, is going to be an incredibly difficult and time-consuming task. Finding a great city generator add-on and like the city generator can save you a lot of time. It already comes with buildings, streets, roads, and some traffic. Now, the problem with the city generator add-on is that the buildings it generates aren't destructible. Luckily for us, even in movies with lots of building destruction like Godzilla or Pacific Rim, not all buildings get destroyed. When you want a destroyed building, you can use generators like the Procedural Destroyed Building Generator. This is great for showing the aftermath of destruction. However, this tool also has its limitations. It only gives you the aftermath, not the destruction process. It doesn't simulate destruction, so you won't see debris falling or the building itself collapsing. For that, you'll need something more dedicated, like RBD Lab. It's a Blender add-on for simulating rigid body dynamics in a more directable and accurate way, allowing you to control the timing, destruction style, and more. As you can see, even when using free, open-source software like Blender to create a movie, you'll still need a small budget, at least for add-ons to make your life easier. Of course, everything we've discussed so far can be done from scratch without purchasing any add-ons. For instance, you can create your own city generator from scratch. Top Channel One on One has a free tutorial on his channel showing how to make a basic city generator using geometry nodes. It's not as realistic or polished, but it's something you can create in about two hours or less. If you're new to geometry nodes, he also offers a course that can guide you through the process easily. There are also free building generators you can use in your projects to keep costs low. The only downside is that many of these haven't been updated in a while, so they may not work with the version of Blender you're using. Another important aspect of your movie that you can't overlook is traffic. A city like Tokyo would have a lot of cars and people moving around. Fortunately, Top Channel One on One has a YouTube tutorial showing how to create basic traffic and crowd simulations using geometry nodes. While this method works well for basic setups, if you need something more advanced, like cars and people avoiding collisions, cars stopping for pedestrians, or obeying traffic lights, the procedural traffic add-on offers more detailed and convincing traffic and crowd behavior. Most of these add-ons provide base functionality, such as creating a fully developed city with the city generator, or simulating traffic with procedural traffic. However, they focus on organized cities and normal traffic. A scenario like Godzilla rampaging through a city introduces abrupt chaos, which often requires manual adjustments. For example, creating disorder in traffic may require hands-on animation. You might need to manually animate some cars and then let the procedural traffic add-on treat them as obstacles for other vehicles to avoid. The car ride course is excellent for learning how to animate fast-moving cars with dynamic camera moves to emphasize speed, while the Blender VFX course can teach you how to destroy buildings without any add-ons, fracturing them, making them collapse, and adding a layer of dust over everything. Sticking with the Godzilla theme, he often emerges from the ocean, and oceans are significantly easier to render than cities. 
A good ocean simulation tool like Physical Open Waters can save you time and effort. It can add waves, foam, and wakes, which is perfect if you want to show ships moving in the ocean as they follow Godzilla. While this add-on is great for large water bodies like oceans and lakes, it doesn't handle splashes or breaking waves. For those effects, you'll need something like flip fluids. While it's a more advanced and accurate simulation system, its limitation is that it's too slow for rendering large water bodies. Instead, you can use it for localized effects, such as splashes caused by Godzilla. Going back to the original question, is Blender suitable for movie makers? The answer is an obvious yes. Blender comes with a built-in motion tracking system, a physics system, a cloth simulation system, and much more. The add-ons I've mentioned here are just tools to make the process faster and easier, enabling you to produce a movie within a reasonable time frame with a small team. This doesn't mean Blender isn't capable on its own. Even more established software like Houdini, Maya, Cinema 4D, and 3ds Max rely on third-party plugins to enhance functionality and improve workflows, such as Zoo Tools for Maya, X Particles for Cinema 4D, and Fume FX for 3ds Max. With all these plugins and add-ons, it might sometimes feel like these applications aren't capable of much on their own. However, most of the time, they already have the functionalities these add-ons provide. The issue is often that the built-in features are either harder to access or more limited. For example, consider Blender's default sky texture. It's easy to use and just a couple of clicks away, but it doesn't include features like clouds, an animated sun, or a realistic atmosphere. In this case, the Physical Starlight and Atmosphere add-on becomes a superior alternative, offering all these features and more, including night settings with stars, a moon, and extensive customization options. Another great example is Blender's built-in landscape tool, which allows you to create terrains like mountains, valleys, and rifts. However, it doesn't come with materials, trees, bushes, or erosion effects. This makes add-ons like True Terrain a better option, as they provide detailed landscapes with erosion support, materials, grass, and trees, essentially giving you a finished scene in just a few clicks. Sometimes the base application provides the building blocks and expects you to construct everything from there. Add-ons often take things a step further. For instance, geometry nodes is one of the best features ever introduced in Blender, alongside Cycles and Eevee. However, it's essentially a collection of building blocks, nothing more. Many artists realize that geometry nodes, while powerful, may not be practical for everyone in its raw form. As a result, they create tools and systems on top of it. Take the city generator and the destroyed building generator as examples. Both were built using geometry nodes. These and many other tools showcase the versatility of geometry nodes, which can be used to create virtually anything. However, building everything from scratch can be time consuming. To save time, you can explore options like the 50 Ultimate Blender Add-on Bundle, which includes a variety of geometry generators for creating almost anything, alongside add-ons designed to assist you, such as AI tools for generating characters, texturing objects, and more. If you're interested in developing your own tools from scratch, my colleague Top Channel One on One offers one of the most up-to-date courses on geometry nodes. It's an excellent resource for learning how to build your own tools and generators.